Hi there, welcome to my channel. The nice people at Mixie Gaming sent over another Nintendo Switch Pro controller over for an unboxing and a bit of a demo. And this one's a really good looking controller first and foremost. As some of you all may have seen my other Mixie Switch Pro controller video where it has RGB lights and turbo. This one has those same cool features, but it's also very unique, has some upgrades to the triggers, and I think this is the nicest designed Nixie Pro controller. So let's get this out and see what it actually looks like. And for anyone interested, Nixie Gaming did provide a promo code for my viewers to use on their whole entire website and that promo code is WOWVJZLTR just like my YouTube name and that's good for $10 off any $40 or higher purchase and their site is full of amazing Joy-Con alternatives that are way better than traditional Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons with drift so their Joy-Cons don't drift and other cool looking Nintendo Switch Pro Controller styled items just like the one we're going to show off on this video and the previous videos that I've made in the past. I'll leave a link down below for anyone interested in this video's item as well as their website in general so make sure to check that out and use promo code while VJs LTR. So today's controller is a Nintendo Switch Pro controller with a completely transparent shell so you can see the whole entire innards of the controller and I'm excited to get that in my hands but inside the box we just have a USB-C cable and thorough documentation but here's the actual controller itself and it looks wonderful I love it already I've always been a sucker for transparent or translucent Nintendo items I'm a 90s kid so I had the atomic purple Game Boy color and a translucent purple Nintendo 64 controller. So just seeing a clear shell on this Pro Controller is giving me all of those joys of my childhood. <laughs> Just seeing that clear shell, seeing all of the mechanics and components and everything that goes into these Switch controllers. So here's the black model of their Pro Controller with RGB lights and turbo also. The only thing that's different between these two controllers besides the aesthetics or how it looks is the button placement for the light controls and the turbo feature. Having this in my hand, I mentioned enhancements and it's clear that this model has better triggers and shoulder buttons in comparison to their black model and we'll take a look at both of those shortly. But here's a good look at the face. So the analog sticks, the D-pad, and all of the face buttons are black. And the only thing that's not clear are those buttons in the top portion of the controller. It has the typical clickiness, I hate that adjective, of usual third-party controllers, and I actually prefer that to spongy buttons. So cheap third-party controllers where it takes a lot of effort to get some sort of response when you press any button in. And one of the enhancements that I mentioned earlier are definitely the triggers for this controller and shoulder buttons. The triggers on this controller protrude a bit and kind of swoop up, so there's a better feel and groove for your fingers, and I appreciate that the shoulder buttons are a bit longer as well. Well too. So that enhancement of the triggers and shoulder button applies to both the black RGB Nixie controller and the licensed Pro controller from Nintendo. So here's one last good look at the top of the controller. You can see that there's so much more surface area for all of those four buttons right there in comparison to the Nixie black controller right there. So here's one good look at both of these controllers before I pull out the Nintendo Switch officially licensed Pro controller. There's a lot of similarities between the Nixie and Nintendo controllers, but overall the Nixie one is a little little bit bigger but it's also a bit lighter than the licensed Switch Pro controller. It's noticeable, but it's not as lightweight or cheap feeling as other third-party controllers where it feels like there's actually nothing inside the shell. <laughs> so there's actually a pretty good weight to it. So let's get this paired up very easy. Just use that sync button, just like with the top of other Nintendo Switch Pro controllers or Joy-Cons, syncs up very nicely and very easily. So before we get to the next test of checking out the analog stick dead zones and trying out the controller to actually see if it works along with the turbo features, let's go through the lighting options for this controller. All you do is press that little triangle that's near the right analog stick. You can cycle through all of the colors. And those colors are blue, red, green, yellow, cyan, orange, purple, pink, and then the whole entire color collection. So in addition to the stationary colors, this also has a breathing effect, which looks like a slow pulse. And you can set it to any of the main colors. All you do is hold down the A button and then press the triangle button and then it'll turn into a pulse mode or a slow breathing effect mode right there. You can see that the blue is the little breathing effect. Press the triangle again, changes to the next color and so forth and so forth until you get through the whole entire cycle. For the sake of time, I sped up the video to times at this point to go through the rest of the cycle and to turn off the lights all you do is double tap the triangle and they turn off so let's get into the analog sticks and see the range of motion so let's do a little bit of calibrating of the control sticks or actually just showing the full range of motion so as we can see the video is sped up just a little bit but as i barely tap it the dead zone seems 
fairly minimal at the most. The whole thing works quite well. So here's the left side. Now let's try the right analog stick. You got to move it one direction just to get it started and get it going. The right analog stick has the same range of motion. And as I barely tap it, you can see that it moves. So overall, this looks very good so far. So hopefully this just holds up and everything works well when we play other games. So I'm just going to be very basic and play my favorite game of all time. If you are a usual follower of my channel, Animal Crossing is always on and always playing. But let's see if all the buttons work down on the d-pad up on the d-pad right and left full 360 villagers go in circles pressing up to change the pan of the angle up on the d-pad gets my item wheel up right and left goes through all of the items down puts the item away so all of those buttons work the left trigger opens my nook phone so that works the left shoulder does nothing in the game at the moment right shoulder opens the chat box Right trigger opens my emojis or emotions wheel or reactions, whatever they call an Animal Crossing. Uh, a works because I used A to activate. B is for sprinting. So if I hold down B, my character should run. That works as well too. Here's my backpack. Press A to open a bag and that works too. So everything is going by smoothly and the controller is responsive. So let's check if the other face buttons work. So we have the capture button. Actually, plus does nothing. The capture button is right there. Home button took us to the home menu and minus should exit out the game and open the save screen and that all works. So, so far everything's working wonderfully on this controller, but now moving on to the more important turbo function. I set my villager by some rocks to show off the turbo in action. In Animal Crossing, you have to repeatedly tap A to keep hitting rocks. But with the turbo feature, there are two settings and you can set any button to turbo by pressing that T button on the controller and the button of your choice. So if you do it one time, you actually have to hold down the button to initiate turbo. So I don't have to keep tapping A over and over again, but the second setting is fully automatic. So all you have to do is press T and the button once again, and then I'm going to let go of the controller. You can see the bottom light is blinking just like the first time when I was holding it down, but now it's all hands-free and I can hit as many rocks as I want, craft as many items as I want in Animal Crossing and it'll be automatic. So to turn that off, all you have to do again is press the T and the A button and then it turns off. So that's how simple it is to use a turbo feature on this controller. Now, the last feature that I want to show off off is to actually control the vibration for the controller and it looks pretty cool with this transparent one because you can actually see the whole thing vibrating right there in the handle so all you do is press t and then up on the d-pad to increase the vibration I think there's three levels and then down on the d-pad to decrease the vibration. So after looking at this controller and testing it very thoroughly, this is the best pro controller on Nixie's website. And once again, for anyone interested in this controller or other Nixie gaming items, I've left the link down below in the video description. And don't forget to use my promo code of WOWVJSLTR for $10 off your $40 purchase or more on their website. With that, this is a great pro controller alternative, very simple feature wise but aesthetically this is one of the best looking switch pro controllers that i've ever seen hope you all enjoyed this video if you did make sure to check out these others and if you really liked hanging out with me today please consider subscribing to be the first to know when i upload something new or go live on a stream and for those who want to support the channel just a bit more check out my memberships by clicking the link in this video's description and maybe you'll see your name at the beginning or end of my next video i'll see you all soon please stay safe out there goodbye